it's always the best for us. Our movies play well here. We love this crowd. We love this festival. It's a place where comedy is treated with some respect, as opposed to the other festivals where we're kind of just shunned, which is insulting. And here it feels like we're we're given our best chance to show what our comedies are, and and just the audience has the same beards as us and tattoos. <laughs> I feel like we keep it weird, which they appreciate. Yeah, no, I mean it's it's it, like we're super grateful to be here back again. I, like we never take it for granted. It's an incredible venue to show a movie, uh, and we're lucky to be back. They were amazing. Like I think you had. Seth and Charlize really got along and found their comedic rhythms together super fast. And we had like an ensemble of players from June to Ravi to O'Shea to Bob Odenkirk to Skarsgård showing up and like making it really, really fresh and fun. Um, and that was cool because we've made, you know, we made a few movies the last few years to have like a fresh group of people come be as funny um, and, as we've had in, in some of our other movies, but um, but just like a really new sort of take on it. That was awesome, yeah. I mean, she's funny as hell, and she's been funny and stuff before. It's just not the first thing people's minds go to, but I think this movie's probably going to change that because Seth and her are like totally matched in this and are equally funny. Like, she brings it. I think that's what, I mean, the truth is that Seth and Evan have been trying to do that with all of their movies, even before the Point Grey movies. That's always been kind of like a signature element of the stuff that they've written themselves and produced. And so we try to bring that to the table all the time because I think audiences are always going to be entertained by what's funny, but they'll actually care and stay for the stuff that makes their heartstrings pull. And so I think it's like, a, that's that to be candid is kind of Seth and Evan's, you know, sort of, uh, that's their sort of mantra, and so we were able to pull it off here again. Dusty Springfield, the musician, who is a lesbian, and I did not know that at the time because I was about a 10-year-old boy. I just thought she was beautiful. I love the song Son of a Preacher Man. That's my first crush. Uh, and I named my son Dusty after her. Is that, that, oh my God. Not, full, not fully after her. <laughs> my wife gets pissed when I say that. I, she wanted to name him Rusty. I thought Dusty because I love Dusty Springfield. He's not named after her, but it derived from it. Wow, that's really good. Um, it might be, I'm going to go with Julia Roberts and Pretty Woman, honestly, because that was like, I love that movie so much and I thought she was really special. So I'll go with that. It's either that or Melissa Barley, my seventh grade, uh, my seventh grade girlfriend, but I don't know. We'll, uh, uh, Julia Roberts seems like a better answer. Messy with her. Yeah, it was a bad situation. It was a bad breakup. She, yeah, she met, she went with another guy. It really hurt my feelings. <laughs> yeah. Julia Roberts, I've never even met. She seems lovely. So see, Dusty Springfield was dead before I even had a crush on her. So that's there a safe go. way to go. That's a better move.